John 17, 20 through 23, a very important prayer. It's one of his last prayers. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them, you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and love them as you have loved me. Any time that I think it ought to be important for us what is important for Jesus, I, I go back to this prayer. What was on his mind as he was facing the cross? What was on his mind during that time, other than worrying about the uh, disciples who fell asleep, this was on his mind as a prayer. I'm concerned for our followers. I'm concerned that I want them to be one in us, one with each other, with many different, many different ways, means, gifts, talents, but still one. United in me as I am one in you. That's, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty serious stuff that was on his mind toward the end. And it, it shows how God was a God of harmony. God was a God of intermedial tones that would work together. And to work together, to sound together, to, to be together, to, to understand each other as one in Him is to understand Him. And I like it because I know a lot of places get really concerned when the ministers don't minister the plan of salvation every week. But when it comes to it, Jesus is concerned for each of us being in Him, shows that He's concerned for those who are with Him already, and 80% of Jesus' teaching when He walked the earth was not toward the cross. He didn't really mention that only to His disciples. Now, I say there's anything wrong with the cross, heavens no. That's, that's where we begin. That's where our journey is. But the, the, the Jesus that came and taught 80% of the teachings of how to live in the kingdom. Kingdom living. And if eternity is forever, why do we feel that eternity only begins when we die? Time was given to man, not man to time. When he set time forth, he separated day and night. And it ended up the way we look at it, you know, we separated it into the hours. It was given as a tool to man. Unfortunately, it is the master now. <laughs> but that time is for us while we're here in the physical. But if eternity is forever, and God has been forever, then where do we fit into that forever? If he knew us before we were born, there must be something about eternity that came before we came into the world. So if eternity is eternity and we're to live in him as one, then we need to learn that eternity is what we're walking in now as well as then. And as well as was then, was now, and will be. Such was his salvation, was then, is now, and continuing. So if eternity is that, we need to learn now. Start practicing now. Isn't it interesting how... Uh, Sabbath school had that this morning. We need to start interesting to, to, to grasp what Jesus is telling us in the now. Know him in the now was a song I really like because it, it spoke of, I want to know you now, Jesus. I know what you did then and I understand what you did then and I understand what you're telling us, but how does that apply to me now? I want to know you're with me. I want to understand your ways. So it's important that we're one and then that's what he's trying to explain to us. They will know we are Christians how? By our love. They will know by our love. They were, we're one in the Spirit. We're one in the Lord. We may have different ideas. We may have different concepts. We may have different anointings, but we're one in Him. And it was important enough for Him to say that in His prayer. Let them be one as you and I are in the Father. It's pretty, pretty tight when you think of who Jesus was in the Father. And He's praying the same thing for us in Him. Sometimes your life will even feel like that. Sometimes your life's out of harmony. You know, it, it just, you don't feel you can even walk in it. You know, 
It's, it's, it's like that song that, let me do just a verse or so of it. I can't recall one time in my life I felt as lonely as I do tonight. I feel like an old violin. Somebody put away and never play again. Don't ask me why I feel like this, I can't say. I just wish it would go away. Wasn't that beautiful? Beautiful. <laughs> Such harmony. <laughs> Such grace flowing. Did you not feel it? Yeah. Oh, we felt it. Yeah. Yeah. Put a friend of mine in a Bob Dylan concert and he got it open for him. Had three strings out of tune. And he, the guy I was with was a musician also. And you could see him cringing. And finally it just boiled out of him like a volcano. He stood up in the middle of the whole concert and I said, Tune it! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is what I'm talking about. The, the song was okay. It was right. The chords were right. But the harmony and the tuning was crap. <laughs> I was hardly getting through that myself. Yeah. Man. Torture. <laughs> You know, a guitar reminds me of, of, of the concept of living the Christian life. And when we talk about harmony, when we talk about in tune and in tune, you know, God was so precise when He created this world we're in, when He created this galaxy that we're in, when He created all the planets. Science has proven that these planets, that this earth, and, and they wrap up ourselves. And, and it was a, a science called biorhythms. Everything that lives has a rhythm. A perfect harmonious tone is in each planet as they evolve. Mm. And it's a perfect tone. It's harmonic. Now what if one of those planets gets a little off axis and gets out of place? I ain't tuning it yet. I'm going to leave it there for a minute. Oh, no. One thing in our body when we get sick puts us out of harmony. Well, that puts our rhythms out of harmony. Haven't you heard about the heart? What if your heart's out of rhythm? Why do they shock you? Your heart's out of rhythm. Is that part of it? You used to work for a cardiologist. I'm looking at you. Yes, I'm a great you. Yes, heart. Let me put it there. Help me out. <laughs> but the point is, God was so precise in our lives and it meant so much to Him that we could be one in His Spirit that even, the, even His creation is created with harmony. When He spoke it into existence, there was harmony. When He planned for your future, there was harmony in His plans. So, you know, to me, He's the head, which is, this is called the headstock, right? Okay. Well, we got all these little things here. And to me, that's Kind of us, kind of the Word. We can either be in the Word, we can be walking with Him and understanding the harmony that He gives us and seeking to. We don't always get it right. That's okay. We're still walking with Him. So we can turn these and guess what? We can end up sounding like that. That's His harmony in our lives sometimes. That's His harmony in our work sometimes. So what do we do? We go back to His Word. We go back to Him. Now each string here is different. They're not the same size. They're not the same gauge. They all make a different sound. But when they're in harmony, they sound together. It makes one. And I'm using standard tuning for any of those one of them. <laughs> I'm not going to go off on some of my weird tuning right now. That blow my whole message. <laughs> I believe in laughter. I think it's good for God's people to have it in their life. Amen. We put it up during the week. We need to come here and be at home in His house. So see, you, you get back with God, you get back in prayer, you get back to Word. Guess what starts to happen? Hmm. Harmony. Harmony. So these strings are kind of like us. This is kind of like His Word. This is the head. Okay? So when we place ourselves under the Word of the head, these can be out or in by the tension, right? Alright, so, you know, when, when, when we start allowing His teachings and His words and life's living, Guess what? Huh. Bigger body, 
When it's in harmony, that's where your sound comes from. That's where His anointing flows. That's where His Spirit flows out of you when you're in tune. And it flows out of you when you're out of tune. I woke up yesterday morning in South Carolina and I wasn't too thrilled. But I slept all night. Hotel food didn't have gravy that day, and that's, that, that bums me out because it covers up a multitude of sins. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was ill, so my harmony, I wasn't in harmony with anything. Not even myself. Nope. That was not the amen part. <laughs> but the point is, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to be like that. That's why he puts keys here. That's why he gives us his word. That's why he gives us each other. That's why he, he sees us as one in him. That when we do our gifts, when we when we work together in him, we have harmony. We have tone that, that is smooth. And it brings that peace in our lives. You see now why even more so it's important for him to pray that we are one in him as he is in the Father? It was important enough for him to concern because people are going to see us when they see us in harmony. You know, I hear so much, well, look at their appearances. If it weren't for them, I'd be one, you know. But the point is, if they see our harmony in him and they see us, oh, we may not this we may not agree on every point, but do we need to actually stand up and fight each other for it? We had the same discussion actually almost coming home yesterday. Was it a whale or a big fish? They may think it's a whale. Do you think when I'm in the glories of heaven standing before my Father in that glorious throne, the first thing that's going to be on my mind was it a fish or a whale? <laughs> then if it don't matter that much now, the point of the matter is he was swallowed by something in the ocean. Be it whatever. Well, when I stand before him, that's not the first thought I'm going to have. Do you see why I'm talking harmony? In the bigger scope of things, if it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. If it does, then we need to get out and start rooting down into it and finding exactly what he's been teaching, why it matters, where it came from, what it says, what their culture was, and consider what our culture is today. If you ever get a chance, you might want to remember this one. If you ever get a chance, read the Cotton Patch Gospel. Take the time. There's, there's, there's the four Gospels, and I think Acts is all he wrote before he passed. But what he done is he took the he took the, the Gospels and he did a translation. He translated them, but he used the U.S. as the territory. Atlanta was like Jerusalem, and what was going on in the times was what you know they were facing in, in, during that time. And it brings to the point is that sometimes things don't change a whole lot. I honestly believe, and, and, and it's okay, this is not one of those points we have to argue on, <laughs> but I honestly believe that if Jesus came back today, we'd probably nail him up again. Yeah. yeah. I, walk in the door, I walked in the door of a church one time, and, and, and I just about found that out the hard way, but I wanted to experiment. I quit experimenting because of this. <laughs> but I stepped up to the pulpit, the first thing I said was, I read about where Jesus said he was coming. And I said, today that's been fulfilled. I stand here. Yes. And then when they got past their shock and all, and ready to carry me out the door, I proved to them that that's what Jesus did when he stood before the leaders at the time and said, today this prophecy has been fulfilled. And as much unbelief as they had what I was telling them, it brings to reality of what Jesus, when he stood up and said, I'm here, you know, it's me. And to understand how are we one in that? You know, we are one in what he did. We are one in the understanding of who he was. Tell peace down here. That's what strength is when we hold on to. And I'm in trouble when battery dies. I don't see what the big deal is about electric cars. We've had electric guitars for years. <laughs> you can't ride it. I'm going back in the word here. Listen to the head.
You know, I once read an article where the uh, doctors had did a, I'm still trying to find more on it, but it was interesting. They were doing the tones of biology, and they were doing the tones of biorhythms in people's bodies, and they were doing tones of the cells as they vibrate. Yeah, it's interesting to know that this isn't really solid. It's just made up by a lot of solid, a lot of things holding together as solid. So those are bodies. We're, we're dust. What was that old saying, hey? They'd look under our bed and see somebody coming or going. Don't make dust. <laughs> well, that's for sure. But we, we, we grow in that. We have to learn, we have to know, we have to understand the truths to be one. The, the truths of, of who he is and what he says. And when we do that, we start understanding, yeah, okay, I got you. And we do need to start eating of the meat. We start eating of the deep, we start eating of the, 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 the deeper things of Christ. We want to strive to be that one that he's praying for. We want to let the, the, the spirit that he was praying in come into our lives now. Because he was praying it not only for his followers, he was praying it for us today because he tells us in his word. You know, Those who hear by the word are going to also be included in this. Let them that come later, let them that come out, let them that come that believe in me, that put their faith in me, let them be one. Let them come together as one in me as I have shown. And let's come out of the world that we're living in and be one with each other because in the end, we could go through whatever and it's going to end up being that we are who we have. When it comes down to being Christians, there's going to come a day that we're going to be who we have. This is it. And that's, that's, that's where we're looking into today. That's why this was so important to bring forth because it was important to him. That we're we are one. See, we get the least little thing out of tune. The least little thing is out of tune when we place ourselves in Him, when we place ourselves in His care, when we place ourselves in His understanding. More than that, when we place our lives in His. When we accept Him for, 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 for being our leader, for being our God, for being our Savior, for being, being our Messiah, then we start understanding that we need to learn to be and walk one in Him. And you know what? That old violin that was out of tune a minute ago can become something you never, never thought of. Because it all comes down to this. It was better than scarred in the auctioneer fed. It was hard and worth his while. Waste too much time on this old violin, and he held it up with a smile. Well, it ain't much, but it's all we got left, and I guess we ought to sell it too. Now, who'll start to spit on this old violin? Just one more and we'll be through. Oh, he said, one dollar, one, who'll give me one? Then he cried, one dollar, would you make it three? Who'll build it twice? That would be nice. Now who's got a bit for me? Raise up your hands. You don't wait any longer. The auction's about to end. Who's got for just one dollar more? Bid on the soap by lane. The air was hot and the people stood around as the sun was setting low. On the back of the crowd an old gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. He wiped the dust from this old violin and he tightened up the strings and he played out a melody pure and sweet sweeter than the angels sing. And the music stopped and the auctioneer with a voice quiet and low said, what am I bid for this old violin? And he held it up with the bow. And then he cried, one, give me one thousand, who'll make it two? Only two thousand, who'll make it three? Three thousand twice, that's a good price. And who's got a bid for me? And the people cried out, what made this change? We don't understand. And the auctioneer stopped and he said with a smile, it was a touch of the master's hand. 
And you know there's many times when a man with his life out of tune, he's battered and scarred, he's sold cheap to the world. They don't understand it. They don't understand how he could be worth anything. But then the master comes, and that foolish crowd, they may never get it. But he knows, and because we're one in him, we know what made that change. It was the worth of a soul and the changes they wrought. And if you're sitting there thinking about, well, that's somebody out here, that's somebody out here, no, look in the mirror. Because that person is you also. He loved it. And he wants us to be one in him. He wants us to understand what he has for us. Thank you, Jesus. Then he cried, one, give me one thousand, who'll make it two? Only two thousand, who'll make it three? Three thousand twice, that's a good price. Who's got to fit for me? People cried out, what made this change? We don't understand. But we know the truth, and we live in one. From a touch of the Master's hand. Touch of the Master's hand.